Hello friends, my name is Holly Rhiannon and today we're going to talk about how to create complex characters in your NaNoWriMo novel. Hello, hello to my new subscribers, welcome to my pre-existing ones, welcome back. It's really lovely to have you all here. Really, I appreciate it so much. Today, I'm gonna chat with you about one of my favorite parts of novel creation, and that is character concepts. So let's just jump right in. When most people think about a good story, their minds first jump to plot. And plot is important, but at the same time, a good story is one that's made up of original and well-developed characters. So, there are different categories of characters, which I'm sure you've heard of, like protagonists, antagonists, etc. But I think it's important to first identify flat versus developed characters. A great example of a flat character would be to say that Megan is a rebellious kid. She skates by on mediocre grades and skips class regularly. She's 17, but she's had a fake ID since she was 14. Megan is well on her way to becoming a dropout. A better developed character would be something more along the lines of Megan is a rebellious kid. She skates by on mediocre grades and skips class regularly. She's 17, but has had a fake ID since she was 14. Megan is well on her way to becoming a dropout. But what no one knows about Megan is that there's a reason for her bad behavior. And every Sunday, she spends hours thinking about that reason as she volunteers at her local church feeding the homeless. Reading the original description, you'll think of a million characters that would go by the same. It doesn't grab you, but by adding that point about Megan's penance, suddenly she's a bit more intriguing, different. You want to read more about her. Not only are characters with hidden depths and secrets more fun to read about, they're also a lot more fun to write about. In November, I'm sure that you'll be writing about a wide variety of people in your novel, but I can pretty safely say that most of them will fall into three categories, which we're going to touch on next. And those are protagonist, supporting characters, and my favorite, the antagonist. Main character syndrome? Your protagonist's got it. Because, well, they're the main character. They've got the starring role. These characters tend to be on a journey to get what they want more than anything else in the world. This could be fame, revenge, finding a long-lost family member, or maybe something more elusive like overcoming a life situation such as poverty or an illness like cancer. Supporting characters are characters in a novel that play a role in the life of your protagonist, though they're not always supportive. Like the loyal Samwise Gamgee, supporting characters may be around for your protagonist's entire journey, while others may only stay for a short time. The supporting character's relation to your protagonist can be wide-ranging. They can be a friend, a relative, a love interest, anything. Like adding layers to Megan's story, as I did earlier, supporting characters have their own hopes and dreams, and so add layers to your protagonist's journey. The physical antagonist is honestly what it sounds like. They're a living and breathing character who acts as antagonist the character which stands in the way of our protagonist achieving their goal. While many antagonists appear as straightforward villains, a well-written antagonist is not. Your physical antagonist may be a true complex monster, or may not be. Not all of them are even evil. They can block your protagonist's path in a variety of ways and be driven by a variety of things. Jealousy, a difference in ethics, misunderstanding, or maybe they even share the same goal as your protagonist and are in competition for achieving it. 
For example, if James is your protagonist and wants to date Lily, but Severus is in love with her and decides to challenge James at every turn because of it, it doesn't necessarily mean that Severus is a bad guy. He's just another guy who is interested in the object of James's affection. But of course, there are antagonists who are truly evil and driven by the urge to hurt others. That's going to be up to you to decide what you go with. So here's your bonus category. It's kind of a fourth, but not really. When we think of an antagonist, we tend to think of the physical antagonist, but there are abstract antagonists as well. Not all protagonists have a physical enemy who they can vanquish with a sword. Some protagonists battle illness or grief or the powers of a corrupt government. These antagonists are abstract because they do not take a physical form. For example, a physical antagonist would be a racist or intolerant character, while its abstract antagonist equivalent would be racism and intolerance in a community or in general. A physical antagonist would be the protagonist's evil boss, while the abstract version of this same antagonist would be a general corporation or company. While categorization is a great place to start with character building, it's most important to really get to know each person who will be playing a role in your novel. I and many others have found that a questionnaire is a great way to do this. Whether you're building your characters on established archetypes, I'm going to link that video around here, or starting from a more ambiguous place, every character can benefit from a little Q&A. As I mentioned in last week's video, I am a official municipal liaison for NaNoWriMo in Montreal this year, so you'll find that I am merging a lot of their references with my knowledge and, and education as I put out these videos, so I'm going to recommend a particular Q&A that NaNoWriMo has released. It covers in four sections your characters as a whole. The questions are specific to your supporting characters, your physical antagonist, and to any potential abstract antagonists, as well as your protagonist, of course. I'll be leaving a link to these questions in the description down below, but to give you an idea of what some of them are like, if, if you were on MySpace back in the day, you'll probably find these familiar. There's something along the lines of name, age, height, eye color, physical appearance, defining gestures or movements, speaking style, pet peeves, fondest memory, special skills and abilities, insecurities, temperament, and so on. While some questions may be more basic, others will certainly get you thinking. And don't go skipping any of the segments. Simple and complex questions are going to be valuable for your character development. And honestly, you'll want to record both, as you never know what you're going to lose track of or, or get inspired by when you're in the thick of writing your novel. And last but not least, where exercises are concerned, I'm also going to link a playlist down below that is my Sims for Authors series, where I create my characters as well as their surroundings in the game of the Sims. So if you have access to that, I highly recommend trying it out as a tool for inspiration and just something to do with, with your hands and visually while you're meditating on your character creation. When creating the characters for your upcoming novel, keep in mind that it's totally normal to not have a sense of who the hell your characters are until after you've finished writing your first draft. Don't get scared if you don't really feel like you have a good grip on one of your key players or even all of them. They might even change as you write. Character building, teardown, and evolution is all part of the process. With that, thank you so much for stopping by. If you've been here a while, thank you for sticking around. If you're new, thank you for joining us. As always, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell button so you actually get notified when I post a new video. And I hope that you are having a day that is just as wonderful as you are. Bye.